Rwandan businessman Felicien Kubuga in the capital Kigali in 1993. One year before the genocide, he's accused of helping to finance. Kabuga is alleged to have funded the ethnic Hutu militias that killed at least 800,000 ethnic Tutsis and moderate Hutus in a hundred days. Kabuga was at large for more than a quarter of a century. His arrest in Paris earlier this month has been welcomed by genocide survivors like Etienne Sanzimana. It's a major arrest, but of course we must respect the presumption of innocence. He was one of the main figures of the old Rwanda, and he was wanted on several charges. So it's a huge relief that he's been caught. Kabuga was indicted by a UN court on genocide charges in 1997. For decades, he evaded investigators in Africa and Europe before he was finally caught in France. French investigators surveyed Kabuga's children online and discovered that one of them rented an apartment in this building in the Paris suburb of Agnières sur Seine. When police raided the home, they found Kabuga, now 84 years old. It is believed that he was living here for at least four years with a false identity. Colonel Eric Emerau led the investigation. During the lockdown, our investigators were working from home, so they had more time to focus on this case, to track phones and locations. And we began to survey one location in Anier. We believed he was in the apartment, but weren't certain until we opened the door. We carried out a DNA test to confirm it was him. The Paris court will decide whether to hand Kabuga to UN custody. He could face extradition to Tanzania to face trial in an international court. Most likely he will be transferred to The Hague and then transferred to Arusha to face trial. Um, but it is still possible that uh, the validity of the arrest warrant uh, will be challenged and that the court will accept that argument. It's unclear how one of the world's most wanted men was able to evade justice for so long. If Kabuga does face trial, it may provide some answers. It might also shed light on the extent to which the Rwandan genocide was planned and offer survivors a sense that, after so many years, justice is finally being served. Natasha Butler, Al Jazeera, Paris.